Professor Neil Piller is a lymphedema specialist. He's had more than 300 works on the condition published and presented. Professor Piller and his team from Flinders Medical Centre in Adelaide are recognised as one of the world's key researchers on the treatment, management and recognition of lymphedema. I'm uh, a professor of lymphology in the Department of Surgery at Flinders Medical Centre currently and I'm also a director of the Lymphedema Assessment Clinic at Flinders Medical Centre. Uh, my history of interest in the uh, lymphatic system stems way back from about 1963 or 4 when I was first introduced to lymphatic diseases uh, by a gentleman called Dr. Casley Smith who was perhaps the grandfather of modern lymphology. And uh, he showed me some, some pictures of um, people with filaritic lymphedema, that's very, very big legs, uh, swollen scrotums and those sort of things associated with um, uh, mosquito um, biting and the um, nematodes associated with that causing swollen limbs. And from that day I decided uh, it would be very, very interesting to make um, some, to undertake some really good quality research on uh, filariasis, on lymphedema, and to actually try and get better outcomes for patients. In the early days we were involved in lots of electron microscopical research looking at models of lymphedema. I spent some time in 1975 in the Canton Spital in, in Zurich looking at models of lymphedema so we could better understand it. I then uh, worked in the, in the north of Germany for a, a year and a bit, had a look again at the way in which we can pharmacologi pharmacologically alter the lymphatic system, that is find out why it's not working and make it work a lot better. Since that time, I've, I've spent a lot of uh, time overseas. I've worked and lived in China. I was looking at the Eastern techniques and technologies uh, because Eastern medicine, 5,000 years of Eastern medicine can't be wrong. They've got a lot to offer us. But sometimes we as a group of Western clinical and medical experts don't often accept that they've got lots to offer us. And in fact, uh, certainly they haven't. And being in China uh, gave us that, uh, that feeling and and some indications of what we can bring into our Western medicine. Thereafter, I've spent a lot of time uh, working in um, Sweden, uh, where we was working in the rehabilitation area, uh, um, looking at how, once a person has got lymphedema, how we can actually facilitate their optimum rehabilitation. So uh, you can see I've had a spectrum from the from the uh, ultrastructural, from the microscopical, through the experimental to the clinical. And of course now we're concerned primarily with the undertaking of a range of clinical trials. And in the undertaking of those trials, one of our key points, one of our key wishes is to present as much objective information as possible about that trial so that scientists and clinicians and physicians around the world can be sure that the results we're presenting are accurate and repeatable and, and real. In a practical sense, we were looking primarily at early stage lymphedema. Early stage lymphedema uh, is a stage where it's primarily fluid. And if we leave the fluid around for a long time, it turns into fat. If we leave the fat a long time, it turns into fibre. So the idea behind the trial is actually capturing people who are early on in their lymphedema, in, in terms of the pathological progression of it, that is, and, um, and then selecting patients with a leg issue, and leg issues are very much more difficult to deal with than arm issues. So if you can make a difference to a patient with a leg lymphedema, you've got something that's pretty strong and it's pretty effective. So what we did, we selected a group of males and females with, with leg lymphedemas, and then we, we, we randomised them into the trial. And it's important, this randomization process, because neither the patient, and in fact, our treating therapists knew who was getting what because in our trial we had a unique situation where we had one machine which was an active machine which was uh, no which had no difference whatsoever from the other machine which is a placebo machine so that that sets up a criteria for a very good uh, clinical trial setup that's how the trial was was um, conducted and the other important thing i think about the trial is that uh, there was random allocation to the two groups the other and the third most important point is that we used a range of, of objective measures. We've talked about those, the pyrometry to measure the limb volumes, the tonometry to measure the fluids, sorry, the fibre, and the um, bioimpedance to measure the fluids. And as well, of course, um, one of the other things that's very important is how the patient feels. And sometimes we forget about that. 
And we also then had subjective questioning of the patients. How, they, how did they perceive the outcome? Because some of the patients don't care about the size of the limb. What they care about is how the limb feels. And if you can order how it feels, sometimes that will improve quality of life and the ability to undertake activities of daily living. So we're looking at two things. We're looking at the objective outcomes and we're looking at the subjective outcomes. Uh, we saw that um, the way in which the body flow apparatus works is by stimulating a part of the lymphatic system called the lymphangine. Now the lymphangine is the structural and functional unit of the lymphatic system. And what we have to do is try, and to, get it, try to get it functioning optimally. And sometimes uh, in all of our bodies right now sitting around doing nothing, our lymphatic system and our lymphangine is just pumping ever so slowly. And unfortunately, in conditions where we put an increased load on our lymphatic system, sometimes that lymphangine just keeps on pumping slow, when in fact it should start to pump quicker and quicker. So what we could see, given our understanding of the lymphangine, that is, it requires neurogenic and myogenic stimulation, we could see a role for the electrical stimulation of the lymphatic system. And of course, that's where the, the body flow technique uh, comes in, because if we get everything right in terms of the settings on the machine to optimally stimulate our lymphatic system, we can make it flow better. We can make it take away a lot more of those waste products, the toxins from the tissues, and therefore get a better outcome for the patient. We got, uh, obviously in all trials, uh, because the group is somewhat heterogeneous, uh, we get a variety of results. Some patients actually responded excellently and some got a one or two litre removal of fluid and we've shown those in case studies. Other patients got very minimal uh, movement of fluid and that's because of the individuality of these people and it's because of the individuality of what we can do to make their lymphatic system work better. But certainly there's some very good results in, in the trial outcomes. There are some extremely good um, case results and we're using these case results to show other individuals what can be expected because sometimes in a clinical trial you don't see your individual, you see the overall result. And a case study, a case result can be very useful to show what an individual with those certain criteria can expect. In a condition such as lymphedema, which is very much a chronic condition, a progressive chronic condition, that interaction between the, the, the health professional and the client is really important. The other thing that's very important also in chronic disease management or a chronic condition management like lymphedema is that we have to acknowledge that if we can halt the progression of that chronic disorder, in other words, today is that patient's worst day, that's absolutely phenomenal. And we sometimes don't value that enough. What we always look for is huge reductions and huge improvements. We can get that and we must value that even more, but what we have to do is acknowledge that if we've stopped the progression of a chronic disorder like secondary lymphedema, we've made a big win in the battle. At the moment, we've been working on a number of strategies for the future along with some of my students. We've got an opportunity to target pharmacology, target the, the, the medicines to a lymphatic system that's not working, which gives us one leverage point. We've got another one where through tissue engineering and lymph node and lymphatic vessel regeneration, we may be able to grow lymphatic vessels. We've got the third one where if we've got lymphatic vessels growing, we've got to do something to get them working. And, and it's quite possible that techniques like body flow involving electrical stimulation of them, of those lymphatic vessels, may actually have a great future.